Hello, viewers. Thank you for tuning in. We are in conversation with Sandeep Samwan, Managing Director of Castrol India. Sandeep, thank you for joining us for this conversation. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Shumantra. Thanks for inviting me for this conversation. I'm looking forward to it. So, Always a pleasure to talk to someone like you. And uh, start off to start off with uh, Sandeep, uh, the industry seems to be just not at a stage wherein we are again, you know, we have tackled another wave of the COVID pandemic. It's not over yet, but the industry seems to be limping back gradually. So could you give us a, a brief idea uh, of where the uh, industry stands currently in terms of the situation in the market? We talked, we discussed a lot about the automotive part, the mobility part, but you now let's also learn from you about where the, what's the scenario in the lube industry and uh, no, and what are the new trends there? Yeah, so, so I think uh, uh, at least last almost one and a half years has been a bit of up and down because we got hit by the first wave in March, starting March of last year. Then second half of last year was looking good from a lubricants perspective. I think everybody started getting things back to, uh, to normal demand levels. Uh, and then we got hit by the second wave, which uh, again started in uh, towards the second half of uh, March and uh, and uh, April and uh, uh, sorry, it started towards the end of April and second half of April. April was not impacted so much, but May was impacted uh, hugely uh, from a demand perspective. While I, I think there was a difference this time, uh, while last year it was a national lockdown. This year there was no national lockdown, but all the states went into lockdown. So it was almost kind of a similar to a, a national lockdown, but without uh, calling it a national lockdown, especially during the month of May. So May was a tough uh, time, and I think uh, since June we've start uh, we've be begun to see demand come back. Although there are uh, restrictions in several states where the cases are still high, okay, but uh, I think I, I would say demand is back to almost about 80-90% levels of uh, of normal demand. And I think uh, we just need to be conscious of uh, 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 there is a talk of third wave. Uh, fingers crossed. Let's uh, touch wood. Uh, let's hope there's no third wave or the severity is much more manageable because the government is kind of uh, pushing vaccination very hard. OK, and and I think uh, through various forums, we keep encouraging people to get vaccinated because I think as a country, as a community, that's a way out. And I, I just want to touch on one thing. We've started a very innovative program where a large part of the mechanic community and the retailer uh, or the dealer network we that operate in sometimes doesn't tend to be very digitally savvy okay so we've opened up uh, through our sales force through our call centers helping all these people to register on coven for vaccination so we are giving our support it's it's working very well and uh, we reaching we plan to reach out to almost about two million stakeholder or two million people within our kind of community or network uh, and help them kind of register for vaccination. So, so I think demand is coming back. Uh, the other thing I would say is uh, during the first half of this year, there's been huge uh, raw material challenges. OK, so the cost uh, inputs have gone up uh, tremendously. Uh, base oil has been very short, which is a, f a fundamental kind of raw material input. There's been pressure on additives. Uh, and uh, one of the large additive manufacturers had uh, not in India, uh, elsewhere outside India. They had a few fires in their plants, so the plants went down and there was a, a supply situation. So it's been quite a challenging first half, I would say, uh, uh, from uh, a market perspective. But, but I think, uh, as I told you last year, we have three principles that we kind of operated uh, uh, under. One is to protect the health and well being of our employees. Uh, second is supporting uh, the community that we work in, that we operate in. Okay, and the third has been protecting financial health of uh, our business. And I think we still hold true to those principles as we navigate this pandemic, and that's helped us a lot. Right, and you you touched upon these challenges about the uh, you know, raw material uh, shortage, some of it, and some also the rising prices. Could therefore could there be an uh, impact at the uh, end point? As in, when I say end point, I mean at uh, at the supply uh, and uh, at the supply chain uh, to the uh, automotive industry, at least in some segments, maybe. Yeah, so so I, I think uh, we've been uh, we've been fortunate because as one of the largest kind of players in the industry, 
we have long term contracts with most of our suppliers so so we managed to kind of fulfill all the demand that uh, that was coming through okay and i think uh, some of the smaller players who typically tend to buy from the spot market they they they've struggled uh, in this uh, supply shortage situation but we've seen uh, 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 prices going up uh, all across the uh, the industry i think most of the competition uh, and including us we take we've had to take price increases uh, which is a uh, information in public domain uh, so that pressure on cost and price continues now how that will impact demand is because the demand has been so kind of up and down uh, uh, we haven't got to a stable state as yet in terms of uh, uh, what impact it may or may not have but uh, uh, on uh, another note uh, no, in the automotive industry in the mobility industry you know uh, we keep talking a lot about new disruptions uh, no, and key among them is the electrification trend and uh, while initially you know, there was a kind of you know, a viewpoint that you know uh, loop industry would really face a big challenge uh, because of obvious reasons if from the, uh, uh, the from the shift from uh, IC to uh, EVs. So, uh, but we have also uh, observed that this has also thrown up some new opportunities, uh, though not of the same scale, but uh, nonetheless opportunities. So, could you just draw a brief picture for us in terms of the opportunities and the challenges that are being faced by the oil industry and Castrol being a key player in it uh, because of the electrification trend? Yeah, sure. I, I think as you rightly uh, said, uh, you can either see it as a challenge or you can see it as an opportunity and we prefer to see it as an opportunity. OK, because I think we're committed to a low carbon future as part of BP. OK, BP has announced that we want to get to a net zero by uh, 2050. And uh, and I think Castrol has a role to play in this uh, electrification transition. Uh, uh, so, so I think uh, we see it as an opportunity. Uh, now, what we've done is uh, we're working with OEMs uh, at a global level uh, to develop new fluids because EVs also need fluids, maybe not to the same extent as uh, the internal combustion engines. But we've been working with OEMs uh, to develop uh, e-fluids, as we call them, so which is uh, transmission fluids, greases, and coolants uh, for electric vehicles. And in fact, uh, I'm very happy to share that uh, we, we work with almost uh, uh, half of the global uh, OEMs on these developments and we supply them uh, the fluids for uh, the electric vehicles. In India, we supply to Tata Motors and MG Motors who are the two big uh, EV players in the current market. And, and I think we've, uh, we've also launched a brand called Castrol On, which is a range of uh, e-transmission fluids, e-coolants and uh, uh, e-greases, uh, more so right now in Europe, okay, because the scale in India is uh, pretty small at the, uh, uh, at the moment. I think the way I see uh, the big electric trend in the future is, I think, uh, uh, as far as India is concerned, uh, electrification will come much faster on two-wheelers and uh, three-wheelers, especially scooters and uh, three-wheelers, okay, that, that's uh, the segment uh, which will come uh, uh, faster. As far as uh, I think cars are concerned, uh, uh, internal combustion engine car, engine car park will continue to grow well into 2040, uh, 2035, 2040s before EVs become kind of a, a main play. So there is enough growth uh, available in even the traditional uh, lubricant segment as far as India is concerned. Okay. And the other opportunity we see is in upgrading the market because of uh, what you saw in BS6, uh, there will be demand for more synthetic products, more uh, advanced uh, lubricants as the engine technology improves, and that gives uh, an upgrading opportunity. So, so I think overall, uh, we're watching the electrification scenarios uh, pretty closely, okay? Uh, we already have a range of EV fluids, and we continue exploring what are some of the other adjacent areas or uh, uh, where Castrol can play. Right. And also in the conventional uh, lube uh, space, uh, in, in the West, uh, Castrol had uh, uh, launched a concept wherein you just replace the lube along with the entire, like a battery, 
how you replace uh, the yeah i think that was a that was a project uh, uh, you're right uh, that was a project that we started on but that's taken uh, a back seat now given most of the oems are already uh, moving down to ev platforms and no, uh, none of the big oems are uh, majorly investing in internal combustion engine development uh, right now so, so i think we put that program on hold it was a good program okay yeah uh, but maybe uh, it was uh, it should have been five to ten years earlier than <laughs> when yeah. it came. Yes, but uh, yeah, and and also and uh, maybe you know the focus now is to you know develop new solutions more uh, tuned towards you know the uh, I, hybrids and EVs, and I think that's where the focus yeah. is. Yeah, and uh, talking about uh, focus, your you know, uh, are there any new focus areas for Castrol India, uh, especially you know because. Times have changed, and uh, there, as I said, there are a lot of disruption, and also a, a fair deal of, you know, a uh, uh, fair amount of uncertainty. And uh, so the focus now is to devise strategies by organizations to ensure to be future-proof as well as not uh, to uh, ensure sustainable growth in the future. So with that objective, uh, are you uh, kind of focusing on any new uh, areas uh, of uh, business? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, uh, definitely, as you said, uh, there's a uh, there's a need to evolve uh, for the future. So, so I think if if I look at Castrol India, fundamentally our strategy uh, will not change uh, so much over the next five years, ten years. I think we we've, we've been very uh, focused on uh, growing our participation in personal mobility. Okay, because we're a premium branded player, and that uh, that's uh, uh, that segment gives us good margins and good uh, growth opportunity. Personal mobility, uh, given the vehicle penetration in India, will continue to grow. Uh, we uh, we will continue participating in commercial vehicles and industrial lubricants uh, sector uh, selectively. Uh, okay, uh, where it makes sense for us rather than being in a commodity uh, kind of a play. At the same time, I think there are uh, areas that we've added on which we've started working on. So, so one is expansion into new channels, for example. Okay, so uh, uh, I think uh, I must have touched in our last interaction. We uh, we are the exclusive suppliers to GOBP, which is a chain of uh, uh, new petrol pumps or fuel four courts, as you call them. Uh, which is a partnership between Reliance and BP. So there's about 1,400 of those, uh, and that will grow to about 5,000 in the next five years. Okay, so that gives us access to a completely new channel where we were not playing before, uh, being the exclusive suppliers on that that channel, uh, and that kind of uh, gives us both uh, uh, from a point of sale perspective, but also added uh, visibility for the brand because millions of consumers far, uh, go through uh, petrol four ports. Uh, on a daily basis. Uh, the second thing is we've tied up with key mobility. Okay, uh, so we've uh, just signed a partnership deal with uh, key mobility uh, to supply lubricants to their network and be on their digital platform, which is called Go Bumper as the loops partner. And key mobility, uh, as you may be aware, is a venture of TVS Group and. Uh, they took over Mahindra First Choice uh, network of workshops. So, so, so that's another partnership uh, we uh, we hope to uh, build uh, much more stronger go going into the future. Okay, and we we also have tie up with some of the uh, the local chains like Speed uh, Speed Force uh, is in the western part of country, which is a, a two wheeler kind of a service uh, and network. And the third area we spoke about was uh, uh, our partnership with 3M introducing a range of car care products okay we've had to put that uh, program on hold for uh, because of covid and lockdowns but we, as, as situation becomes normal we'll bring that on stream and the other element which we're looking at uh, a not a, a element I, I i think will be fundamental to any businesses uh, being sustainable okay uh, so we've just launched a castrol globally has launched a program called path 360 okay uh, which is centered around uh, basically uh, uh, saving waste, uh, uh, reducing carbon uh, 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 in our products uh, and in our operations. And the third area is improving lives. So, so I think that Pro 360 program is going to become fundamental to uh, to our strategy going forward. Right. And you 
uh, you touched upon these new initiatives, you know, which are, as you said, to ensure uh, 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 sustainable growth for the organization. If I, if, I, if I were to ask you in terms of cumulatively, these new initiatives cumulatively, uh, what could, how big a contribution could they make uh, or are they expected to make uh, to the company's overall turnover, let's say in the span of next maybe, what, three to five years? Yeah, I think uh, uh, being a listed entity, I don't want to kind of uh, share any numbers and uh, 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 and normally we don't talk numbers when we even talk to financial analysts, but I think our intent is to to grow and grow ahead of the category and this category grows at about two, three percent. Fine, uh, but we want to grow ahead of the category uh, through, uh, through these initiatives and, uh, and uh, through our uh, core strategy. And as you also at the beginning of the conversation touched upon uh, BP's uh, vision to be you know carbon neutral, uh, so you know, uh, so in line with that. So uh, BP that taking here. Sorry, sorry. Please uh, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, in uh, what steps uh, is uh, uh, Castrol India taking you know, uh, to to really you know reduce its carbon footprint and uh, you know, eventually go carbon neutral. So, so I'll, uh, like BP has announced globally that it wants to transition from an integrate, uh, uh, integrated uh, oil company to an uh, international oil company to an integrated energy company, okay, and be net zero by 2050. As far as Castrol is concerned, I, I spoke about the Path 360 program, uh, okay, which is uh, we're looking at reducing waste, for example. Uh, by 2030, we want to reduce our plastic footprint by half. Okay, so we've already taken some actions. Uh, last year, we, we changed the design of our uh, bottles for lubricants, which reduced plastic content by 20 percent. Okay, uh, 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 we've also uh, kind of uh, <clears throat> begun to look at energy consumption in our plants. Right. Uh, and uh, in fact, this year we'll be doing an energy audit and we're lo uh, looking at can we use uh, a large part of solar or renewable to run our plants, fine. Uh, we've taken initiatives such as uh, 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 very good work done by a technology team uh, by blending lubricants at lower temperatures, which reduces energy consumption, fine. So there are initiatives like that, which is reducing waste or saving energy or uh, saving water usage in our plants. But also on the product side, uh, we're looking at how can we reduce carbon intensity of our products by you, uh, either using editors which use less carbon or working with the base oil suppliers uh, 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 with having reduced carbon content in base oils. Okay. So those are some of the areas that we, uh, we continuously kind of uh, keep working on. And is the technical team of Castrol India also, you know, uh, how significantly are they contributing towards uh, these, uh, some of these initiatives, not only for India, or maybe overseas as well? So I think the way our uh, technology uh, teams are set up is our biggest technology center is in uh, Pangborn in UK, okay, which is a global technology center. And uh, those teams work with, uh, 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 with OEMs and uh, other global uh, experts in bring uh, in designing and bringing out new products or new uh, 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 new services we have a technology uh, center in uh, uh, silvasa okay but that team primarily focuses on adapting our global solutions to the needs of customers in india okay so that's how that teams work or providing inputs to the global r d centers in terms of what is needed for india and we are also fortunate to have a a pilot blend plant in Silvasa, okay, which uh, helps us blend new formulations, work with OEMs, try and test formulations uh, in a small setup. It's a unique facility uh, that we have in India. Okay, and and some of it, uh, some of it could find uh, uh, an application uh, maybe in some other markets also. Absolutely, absolutely. On that note, uh, Mr. Sangwan, thank you very much. It was. Uh, a, a very good conversation, I would say, and uh, best wishes to you and uh, all at Castrol India with your initiatives. And uh, please take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thanks, Shamantra. And you, you too, stay safe and uh, wish you uh, all the best and to all your colleagues uh, uh, in your magazine, in digital magazine. And uh, please do stay safe and take care. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you very much. And thank you viewers for watching this conversation with Sandeep Sangwan, Managing Director of Gastrol India. Take care and stay safe.